Hey there guys, as some of you may know, I was at E3 a few weeks ago, and you may also know that at E3, there was a playable demo for Mirror's Edge Catalyst. And they didn't show the demo during the press conference, it was really just for people who were there. So I thought I'd go ahead and make a video telling you what it was and what I thought about it and how it's different from the original Mirror's Edge and whatever. Um, I'm very sorry that it took me this long to make the video because it has been like a few weeks and uh, I just have not had time to sit down and do this, but I guess maybe better late than never, I hope. And there's a couple important things to note first about the game. And the first is that it's still pre-alpha. Like it actually said pre-alpha on the screen while playing it the whole time. So a lot of what I tell you about it could change. Maybe it doesn't represent the final version of the game that comes out in February. You know, just keep that in mind. And also that since the game is a reboot, kind of, they're changing some stuff about Mirror's Edge. They're keeping a lot of stuff, but there are some things that are changed. So when I like make references back to the original, just keep that in mind that they're changing some stuff. So just, you know, it's, it's all okay. So at E3, if you went, if you waited in line to play the demo, how it worked was first they brought you into a little room where they did a presentation about the game. And then after that, they took you into another room where you actually got to play the game. And it was pretty short. The presentation they showed us was 13 minutes. And then the actual demo that you played was also 13 minutes. So it's not a whole lot of time to spend like playing the game, but you know, it was still pretty fun and cool. If you watch the press conference, you probably saw that they showed a new trailer for Catalyst, which is the title of the new game, Mirror's Edge Catalyst, which is pretty cool. So I won't be go really going over the trailer since you could all go watch that right now if you wanted to on YouTube. This is just going to be about the demo and this could be a long video. Like I think it'll probably take me like 25, 30 minutes to explain everything that I uh, took notes about. So at the presentation that they showed us, they started off by showing the trailer that they showed at E3 2015 and then they started kind of talking about it more and there's like a few differences that I want to point out that they talked to us about that are like pretty different from the original and the probably the biggest one like in universe about the city in Mirror's Edge which they have named now to be the city of glass it didn't have a name in the original but like the first thing they started talking about was how the city was run and it's there's no government in the city it's just run by corporations and the conglomerate they said and that's pretty different because there was definitely a government in the original mirror's edge because they like talked about the mayor mayor callahan and robert pope was running for mayor and all this stuff so there's no government now so maybe callahan was no longer going to be a character who knows maybe maybe not but so it's run by corporations now. And I guess the main one is Kruger Security, which is run by Gabriel Kruger. And they said he's the main antagonist of the game. So in the original Mirror's Edge, the like security firm we were against a lot was Pirandello Kruger. And in Catalyst, Pirandello and Kruger definitely exist as separate companies. So if they're keeping that part of the story, it's like before they merge together. If not, then they're just separate companies or whatever. But so Kruger Security is like the, I guess the main one that we'll be seeing. Um, and then they said that there are two factions of people that live outside of society. And the first one that we know of, of course, is the runners and Faith is a runner. And they said runners are, you know, couriers. They do like high tech cat burglary and stuff. And they're pretty much used by corporations in the city as pawns to do stuff for them. And they're kind of just tolerated and they don't really go after the runners very much. And then the second faction is Black November. And they're a rebel group that have been branded as terrorists. And they're, uh, this is kind of keeping with Mirror's Edge original because there was a group of people in the like in the first game that was called November and they were just kind of against the government and there was an event called the November riots where Faith's mother was killed and stuff and that's when she ran away to become a runner and all that so they're keeping the name November they, it's called Black November now but it's kind of the same thing so that's cool that they're keeping that especially because they didn't really even talk about it much in the first game 
yeah, that's pretty much what they talked about. They said, like, for the story that Faith discovers a dark secret about the city and that has to become the catalyst of hope and change that the city desperately needs. And that's pretty much how they ended the presentation. Um, I had mentioned, like, Mayor Callahan before and how she might not be a character because there's no government. But in the trailer, there was actually, like, in one of the areas, there was a Callahan construction logo. So they're either just keeping the logos from the original game or maybe there will be a character still. Um, who knows? Uh, just, I just remembered that. So <clears throat> there you go. So that anyway, that was the presentation. And then they brought us into the next room where we got to play the demo. And first, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go over the controls of Mirror's Edge Catalyst, at least how they were when I played it there a few weeks ago. So I have it, like, it written down and stuff. And they're mostly the same as the original Mirror's Edge. There are some differences, but like the movement is pretty much the same. And the way that the demo worked is um, it was running on PC, but we were playing with Xbox One controllers. And I'm going to be giving the, the controls in uh, PlayStation controls because that's just what I'm used to when I'm playing Mirror's Edge on controller, just so you're aware. So, to move around in Mirror's Edge, it's pretty much the same because L1, the left bumper button, is the jump button. That's for any, like, up actions, like jumping, wall running, climbing, all that, you know, whatever. That's L1. And then L2 is any down actions like crouching, sliding, letting go of ledges, coiling, mid jump. That's the same as the original Mirror's Edge. So that's cool that they're keeping that. Um, the right bumper button, R1, was the quick spin button, which is also the same. So, you know, that's if you're doing a wall run or wall climb, you can press that to turn around and then jump off the wall again. Um, you can spin around while you're standing. R2. The right trigger was the button to bash through doors. So that's the same as the original, except that R2 is no longer the melee button, like the combat button. They changed that. And they changed that to be the square and triangle buttons, or both combat. And I kind of like how they're doing this, because it gives you an option of how you want to play with the two different like melee buttons. And first of all, if you didn't hear, there's no guns in Catalyst. Like, apparently, you can't use any guns at all in the game. So it's all just, like, melee attacks, which is cool. So how it worked was the square button it was uh, what they called a flow attack, and the triangle button was what they called, like, a transference attack or something like that. And what that means is that if you use a flow attack on an enemy, you'll like keep your momentum and you'll hit the enemy or whatever and then you'll just keep running past them after you knock them out or whatever. So that's like to keep your momentum. And then triangle, the transference attack, transfers your momentum into the enemy. At least that's what I gathered. So it's like, I guess a more powerful attack where you just like, I don't know, do something, jump into them or whatever and then your momentum carries on over to them and then maybe they get pushed back really far. But that's like the transference attack. So that's how the melee was. And then the X button, or A on Xbox, I guess, is the interact for buttons or whatever things you can use. The select button, or view button, was brought up the map. Because the game is going to be open world now, so the map is definitely a thing. And, you know, you can set waypoints, see what there is to do in the world around you with the map. It's pretty normal map. And then the only thing is that the circle button didn't actually do anything in the demo that I could tell. So I'm thinking maybe they'll add like reaction time to that or something because there was no reaction time in the demo. Um, at this point, there was like the controls I just told you was all you could do pretty much. So no reaction time. Maybe I'm hoping they'll add that to circle and keep that mechanic because I liked it a lot. So the actual demo now. Um... I'll go ahead and just go over what it was, and then I'll tell you some like gameplay differences between the original if you're interested in that, because if you watch my channel, you probably will be. So anyway, the, the actual demo, when it started, there was a cutscene where Faith was being released from prison from Kruger security, and they tell her that she has 14 days to find employment or she'll be re-imprisoned. So she's like, okay, 
whatever, let me go, and she leaves. And then once she leaves the prison area, she is approached by another runner named Icarus. And Icarus, like in the original, was a thing. So they're keeping the name, but it's a person now instead of like a secret government project. But anyway, Icarus tells you that he he was sent by Noah. And then, so I guess Noah is a guy. I'm going to guess like maybe like the leader of the runners or something. But Noah sent Icarus to you and Icarus gives you like a data link, which I think is like a contact lens or something. And then he like removes some interference that was on it. And he says you're off the grid and good to go. So I guess like they can't track you or whatever now. So you have this thing, and I guess this data link is how runner vision works now. Instead of it being like Faith's natural instinct, once you set a waypoint on the map, the runner vision will lead you to that waypoint. And I guess it's using that data link they gave you. And then after all that, it starts like a tutorial, like a movement tutorial. And you just kind of follow Icarus through this little area, and you know, you jump around some stuff, you springboard off a thing to get on a roof, and you climb up things slide under vents and hit a door i don't know like kind of like normal like kind of like the original training except like a lot quicker and then once you go through the door at the end of that uh the game teleports you to another area of the game so it doesn't just continue from there but it takes you to a place called centurion yards and that's another name that they've kept from the original because centurion plaza was an area in chapter one but so they take you now in Catalyst to a place called Centurion Yards, which is kind of like a big playground area, like the training in the original Mirror's Edge. Whoop. Um, <laughs> hit my mic. So once you get there, you can kind of just do whatever you want. There's like three missions you could do, or you could just run around and mess around, whatever you felt like doing. So once you got to Centurion Yards, it tells you about the map and how to set a waypoint, and then once you set your waypoint, your runner vision leads you to it, and it takes, like, the the slowest, safest, easiest path is where it shows you, kind of like the original Mirror's Edge. And then the, the closest waypoint to set was to the dash mission or activity. And that was, like, a time trial. And um, I'm going to go over the three missions. There was dash, and then billboard hack, and courier is where the three mission types and the dash mission was just like a normal time trial. Uh, once you start it, you just have to get from where you are from the beginning point to the end point of the time trial. So it wasn't like the time trials in the original Mirror's Edge where you have to hit like a series of checkpoints. You just have to get like at least in this one that we could do in the demo, you had to get from point A to point B, however you wanted to. And that was the whole thing. How it worked more specifically is that once you started the mission, there was like a starting line in front of you. It was just like a line on the ground. And once you passed that line, the timer started. And you could like move around behind it without the timer going. But then once you passed the line, the time would begin. And then you'd have to make your way to the end. And like your runner vision would actually be leading it to you, but it'd be taking like a really slow path. So like the first time I went through the dash, it took me like 45 seconds following runner vision. So I got to the end and the end was like a circle. And once you step inside the circle, time ends, and then it rates your time up to three stars, like the original time trials. So if you do really well, you'll get three stars. And following runner vision, I got like one star. So my second time, I just ran to the end and it, I got like 25 seconds or something and got three stars, so that's cool. And you can also restart the time trial during it by like holding the interact button and it would restart you like right away. So that was cool. It was pretty quick. And then, so that was Dash. The second mission you could do was the billboard hack. And it wasn't really a mission so much as just like a thing in the world that you'd find. And then you hold the interact button and you it's like this electronic billboard with some corporate propaganda on it. And then you just like hack it I guess like that's what they called it so you and it would change the propaganda and just like show the runner symbol and that was like one of the missions you could do you just find this billboard and then you change what's on it to the runner symbol and then you win and then the third mission was the courier mission and this was the one with combat in the demo so what it was is like you pick up a package which was like a flash drive or something 
that was in a box on a rooftop and you just have to take it to a drop point. And there were some enemies along the way, so you know, you could, you just run to the end and then you could beat up some guys. So I'll talk a little bit more about combat when I go into gameplay differences. So anyway, that was the courier, pretty simple. Just, it's kind of, you know, you just drop off a thing and then you're done with it. So yeah, and then demo, if you're messing around, there was like a lot of buildings you could go inside that just had like a window or a vent open or um, a door you could bust through and you could run through the building. It was pretty much just, they're mostly just small areas where you could run to like the exit of the building and continue you're on your way. So some people were probably wondering how going inside buildings works and I guess, in the demo, it seemed pretty cool. But yeah, that was like the whole demo, after, like after the three missions, which didn't take long. You could just run around, mess around, go look for collectibles. There were like little collectibles and stuff. Um, so that was the uh, the thing, that was the demo. So I'm now I'm gonna go over some gameplay differences and that'll be the rest of this video and it's probably gonna take uh, like a while still because there's a lot that I had written down for it. And so the big, probably the biggest thing for me that was really different from the original Mirror's Edge is that there was no side jump or side step anymore. If you tried to move sideways and jump, you just like jumped upwards in the air and started moving sideways. And there, there wasn't like an actual side jump. So, I mean, but it is pre-alpha, so maybe there will be eventually, but there wasn't in the demo. So that means like no side jump boost, of course. And you couldn't do like a side jump during a wall climb. That was like a pretty cool movement mechanic in the original that no one ever used unless they were a speedrunner. <laughs> so yeah, no side jump. And then there was just like some general movement differences that are pretty hard to like really explain precisely, but it felt like it was a little more forgiving with ledges and stuff. Like if you slightly missed a ledge or if you jumped a little bit late, you'd be able to like step onto it or she would jump anyway. There's like a buffer distance it felt like. That's something I'd have to spend like a lot of time messing with to know exactly what the difference is, but it just felt a little more forgiving playing the game, which a lot of like newer people too it will probably definitely like. You'll still be dying a lot. Like if you just miss a jump or if you're off by like a bit, then you'll still die or fall off a building, but it, it is like a bit more forgiving that I think helped a lot. But it's not like super easy now still, so don't worry. And then another thing that was pretty interesting and seemed extremely exploitable was that you could chain wall climbs. Like in the first game, if there were two walls close together and then you did a wall climb turn jump off of one, you would just like hit the wall behind you and fall down because you didn't have like any upward momentum or whatever. But in this game, you could do a wall climb turn jump. And then when she hit the other wall behind you, she would start wall climbing up that and you could do another turn and jump from that. And I couldn't find anywhere tall enough to do more than two in a row. So I don't know if you can do more than that, but like you could chain wall climbs, which is seems like a big thing, but also the game is going to be open world. So you have to be able to get like everywhere. So some of the movement will have to be a little different like that. So you can get anywhere in the world. And it's um, where the first mirror's edge was like pretty limited to where you were supposed to go, I guess. But that was a thing. And then, like, even if you did, if you were in a corner, and you did a wall climb turn jump, you could actually start a wall run on the wall that was right next to you after the turn and the jump. So like you could do like a wall climb turn jump into a wall run and then you could jump and do another wall climb or anything. Like it was super free, I guess, but also like maybe a little less realistic, but you could get like anywhere, which I liked, but it also seems exploitable if, I don't know. We'll just have to see when the game comes out, but that was like a pretty big thing I noticed coming from the first Mirror's Edge. And then also for wall climbs, if you just wall climb up a wall and then you stop, she'll like slowly slide down the wall now, which gives you time to like turn and jump or whatever from that. And she won't just climb up the wall a bit and then fall down. So that was a thing. Um, the turn from a wall climb felt a little bit slow. Cause I think like in the first game, if you did a turn while wall climbing, you could pretty much jump right away before she even finished turning all the way. I think what was going on was it made you wait until she had spun around all the way before you could jump, 
which makes sense, but it, it like felt a little bit slower doing that. That's just kind of what I got out of it. And then let's see what else I have written down pipes in the game. So climbing up pipes in the first game was really slow and it like broke momentum whenever you had to climb up something. But in Catalyst, you climbed up pipes really fast, which was nice. So it was like super fast climbing up pipes, which we've kind of seen in some of the gameplay they showed like last year and stuff. And then there was also those corner pipes where they were like on a corner of a building and you wall ran into them and she would swing around the pipe around the corner. That was pretty cool. I don't think you could climb up those pipes because they were like really small. They were just like little swing corner pipes, but that was cool. I liked those. And then one big thing, like another, another big difference is that in Catalyst, you could springboard off of pretty much any low object. So comparing that to the original Mirror's Edge, in that game, if there was like a low object, and then right behind it, there was a slightly higher object, then you could do a springboard off of those and she would like jump really high off of them. But in this game, if there was just any kind of low object, you could springboard off of it. And the way that worked is that if you tap the jump button, she would vault over it or onto the object. But if you held the jump button down, she would jump onto the object and then jump off the top of it really high. So it was like a springboard that was, you could do like anywhere. And I think that is good because the game will be open world because you have to be able to go everywhere and being able to springboard off of anything will definitely help you get around on like rooftops and stuff. So I think that's something that they really had to do, but it's definitely different from the original. And you like see everything now in the game as something you can use to get around. Like for the dash activity, when it started, you could go straight forward, but off to the left there was like a railing and you could springboard off the railing and there was like a zip line way up there you could get onto the zip line from. So, you know, it's just like, it's cool to see all these little objects and be like, oh, I can use that now. And I can't just like, instead of just going over it or whatever, like in the first game. So that was cool. Also like if you quick turn in the air now, it no longer spins you around and lands you on your back. It, you just landed on your feet facing the other direction. And the quick turn also didn't have a delay. Like in the first game, you could only do a quick turn once every couple seconds. You could just, in this game, you could keep spinning around, which really doesn't mean anything, but it's different. So I wrote it down. Also, someone asked me if there were any elevators in the demo and there were no elevators in the demo. <laughs> it was all just running around normally. So that's cool, I guess. There were lots of elevators in the original. Um, so I went a little bit over the combat. I explained the two buttons for the flow and transference attacks. There was one thing about the combat that I hope they change or make optional. The, like in the courier mission with the combat, on the last enemy when you attacked him, it took you into like this finishing move where it like brought you out into third person and Faith was like spinning around the guy and hitting him and stuff, which like it looked cool. But I think taking you out in the third person just breaks the first person immersion. I don't really like that. Also, I didn't know how the finishing move worked. There was some kind of input you were supposed to do, but I have no idea what it was because they didn't really tell us anything about that. But I hope that they either remove the how it takes you out in the third person or make that optional because I would much rather just stay first person the whole time. But that's just me. I don't know, we'll have to wait till February to see uh, what they do with that. But anyway, like otherwise, uh, in combat, you could attack from anything. Like if you're just running, or if you were wall running, or on a zip line, or sliding, or jumping, or anything, you could attack an enemy from it, which was nice. But the other thing is you couldn't really do a lot of your attacks unless there was an enemy there. Like you could not attack while you're wall running unless there's an enemy there. So rip wall run kicks, of course. Because, like, I remember I was wall running and pressing the attack buttons and nothing happened. So I think there just has to be an enemy there for a lot of that. But you could do, like, some attacks just standing still. Like, you could make her kick and just not when there's no one around. So, you know, I don't know. Uh, let's see. They mentioned, like, that there will be gadgets in the game that help you get around the city. But there were not any of those in the demo, so I don't know what they are. Um, and I really hope one of the gadgets we get is not a grappling hook because then the game would just turn to like Dying Light where like Dying Light is fun, 
but once you get the grappling hook it you just like don't need to do any of your other traversal moves at all like you can just use the grappling hook forever so i hope that they don't give us a grappling hook but that's just me i'm sure maybe some people would like that but i'd much rather just do like the faith's normal move set all the time because i think it's fun but i'm definitely looking forward to see what the gadgets will be okay and i'm sorry this is a long video i, I just have a lot to go over so in the demo if you fell off a building instead of spawning you at like a checkpoint or some preset spawn point, you actually just respawn where you fell off. That is really cool. And I know a lot of people wish the first Mirror's Edge did that. Because if you fell off a building, you would just like spawn pretty much where you fell instead of going back like to some checkpoint at the entrance to the area or something. So at least in the demo, that's how it worked. So that I liked, that was nice. And then it felt like you had a much bigger window to skill roll now in mirror's edge you had like a really short amount of time before you landed to press l2 and then you would roll but in this game you have much longer to press the button before you landed you still had to press it before you landed but you had longer to do it so that's a little easier now people will probably like that and then also, I don't know exactly what it was, but if some kind of silly thing is that if you did a skill roll into a wall, hitting the wall while you're rolling would like stop your animation and you would be laying on your back looking up at this wall that you just hit and like it looked really silly and I'm guessing that was intended. I actually thought it was some kind of bug the first time it happened, but I think it makes sense and I just thought that was funny. So yeah, that was a thing that happened. Uh, rolling was definitely faster in this game as well. Yeah, in the first game, if you rolled, you lost like almost all your momentum. But in this game, you actually kept a lot of it. So that is a good thing. And that's like the last note I have written down. So that's all the gameplay differences I was able to get and play the game. But I definitely approve of uh, Mirror's Edge Catalyst. I thought it was a lot of fun. It still felt like Mirror's Edge, even though it was different. But it wasn't like so different that it felt like a completely different thing. And I definitely enjoyed it, and I'm really looking forward to when it comes out on February 23rd, 2016 is the, the current uh, date. But yeah, long video, but that's everything that I noticed from the demo at E3 a few weeks ago. Sorry again it took me so long to do this, but uh, I just haven't been able to until now. Yeah, that was it. I'm sure there's a lot I didn't get to test, but that is a lot of information, I think. So that was Mirror's Edge Catalyst and the demo, and I hope to see you all again, goodbye.